Welcome to today's community conversation. I am your community host, Sean Hurley. Um, we're joined by Deepak Money, uh, and we're going to be talking about file linking options uh, for cloud work shared Revit models. Um, next, please, if you would, Deepak. Quick little spiel on community conversations. Community conversations are virtual meetups featuring expert speakers from across the community. Sessions range from deep dives, tips, tips and tricks, to uh, live demonstrations on products such as AutoCAD, Revit, Dynamo, Fusion 360, round tables on industry, all kinds of stuff, all different experiences, and you can lead yours as well. So at the end, I'll give you a link, or you could just go to the community conversation page. And what we do there is there's a, a getting involved tab. And if you click that, it'll tell you all about community conversations and the form is there to uh, submit a proposal if you'd like. Next, please. The lawyers love this one. This one just mainly says, if we say anything, you know, talking about future of products or features, um, you know, if we talked about a beta or we talked, you know, if Deepak talked about, you know, that Revit's gonna be uh, able to read your mind in 10 years, <laughs> lawyers want us to tell you that uh, we can't make any promises to be held to those crazy wild although cool uh, ideas. Um, so make your purchasing decisions based on the products as they ship today. So that's that's all it is. Um, some, some quick norms here. The line's been muted to uh, reduce the background noise. Although we do invite you to turn on your camera where possible, if you feel comfortable with that. It kind of gives us a, a feeling of uh, being in the same room. It's not the same, but it's closer. Um, now, this is a conversation, so we like to keep them that way. This is personal. You get to talk to awesome experts like Deepak. And what you do is you use in the bottom right, the little hand thing and raise your hand and we'll call on you to unmute. Or you can just type your question in the chat and uh, I will try and strategically uh, um, wait for a pause with Deepak and ask him the question that's relevant to what he's doing and what you asked. Uh, the session is recorded and a link will be on the event page as well as in YouTube in the next 24 hours. Thank you, sir. Next. As I said, I'm Sean Hurley, Autodesk Community Engagement Manager. I'm a geeky technologist in very, very cold Bend, Oregon right now. <laughs> Over to you, warmer Deepak. Thanks, Sean. Um, my name is Deepak Many. Uh, some of you guys might already know me. I'm an engineer by uh, profession been in the industry for almost 24 years, really blessed that I get to travel around the world, do talks at various conferences. Uh, I love Ordus Construction Cloud, BIM 360 as well, but Ordus Construction Cloud is my love these days. All right, um, I wanna start with, um, first of all, thanking Ordus communities and Sean Hurley, in, in, uh, especially for giving me this opportunity to come here and talk to you guys about uh, various things that I really like. Uh, talking about the session agenda this morning, uh, I'm going to um, demonstrate various five file linking methods for Revit Cloud Shared Models. Now, if you've been to my presentations in the past, I love doing live demonstrations with live software. The funny thing is this morning I woke up and I saw a message that some of the uh, ACC services were degraded. Uh, I am uh, hoping that all those services are back up and running now and we'll be fine with our demonstrations. They so it take me about... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so just just a little backstory on that. It was a it was a third party authentication system that brought everything down. Yep. There was a big panic here. So. Yeah, yeah. I can imagine. I can imagine. Seems the best be part was, yeah, the best part was it is when whole of the ANZ region or the APAC region was sleeping, so we didn't get to feel any of that problem. Yeah, it was right right when North America uh, was yeah. waking up, and boy, what a brutal wake up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, that's what technology is, yeah. Uh, so it's gonna take me about 25, uh, 30 minutes to do those live demonstrations. Uh, then now we're gonna discuss the uh, file linking method for non work shared Revit models for under 10 minutes. And then I wanna open it for Q&A for 15 minutes. But as Sean mentioned, if you have any questions for me, please raise your hand. Sean can uh, ask me to pause at any point of time and ask questions so I could answer those questions straight away. You do not have to wait till the end if you have any questions. All right, so with this, let's get started. So when we talk about the file linking methods for Revit cloud work shared projects, 
we are talking about projects where we have got design collaboration enabled. So we are talking about projects that are hosted on our desk construction cloud, or in this case, it could be BIM 360 as well. These methods would behave exactly the same. Now, there are three methods for Revit Cloud Work shared hosted projects that we can use for file linking. The first one is what we call as live linking, where we are linking live work in progress models from other teams. The second one is what we call as shared linking. In this case, the teams actually share packages using the design collaboration module, and then we link those shared models. The third one is what we call as consumed linking, which is where we actually consume the packages shared by other teams, and we link those consumed models. Then. The other type of linking I want to talk about is no matter what project you're working on, there would always be some teams that would decide not to use Revit Cloud work sharing. So in that case, how do we link those non-work shared Revit models that are hosted on Autodesk Construction Cloud or BIM 360? In this demonstration, I'm going to use a project hosted on Autodesk Construction Cloud, but everything that I'm showing is exactly the same in uh, BIM 360 hosted projects as well. So it's pretty much exactly the same. All right, let's start with live linking. In live linking, we actually link models from other teams work in progress folders. Now this actually is a really uh, important thing to remember that this only can work in high trust environment. Now, why does it only work in high trust environment? Because the other team needs to give you create permission to their design collaboration team folder. Now, as soon as they give you create permission to their design collaboration team folder, what that means is that you could actually go and make changes to their model. So that's why it's a really high trust environment. Not everybody would want to work in this uh, environment, but it's uh, a way of linking. And the important thing in this case is when you link someone else's live work in progress model, their current status will show in your model every time you open your model. Now, before I <clears throat> show you a demonstration of this, I actually want to talk about some pros and cons of this type of linking. Some of the benefits is it is the most up-to-date way to keep track of changes from both internal as well as external team members. It is really handy when you're in a time crunch environment where weekly updates or milestone packages are too slow. So maybe you're in a time crunch and you want to see live changes from other teams. Now, as I mentioned earlier, please, please, please be careful that all changes will be visible to everyone as soon as you sync with Central. Now, this is also a problem with this because as soon as you sync with Cloud Central, the changes from the other team will be visible in your model, and that could actually affect your work. Now, they may move certain elements that you have referenced in your design, which means that your elements will update as well without you even uh, having a control over that. It also causes a lot of strain on the network due to downloading Delta changes to personal accelerator cache. So a lot of um, going back and forth with the cloud model with your local downloads, which means, as I mentioned, a lot of strain on the network. It is not recommended on large global projects. So please, please, please be mindful. If you're working on large infrastructure projects where you've got 200 models that you have linked, please note that this is not the right way to do it because there'll be so much going back and forth and it's going to clog the entire network down. So please be mindful of this. Let's now take a look at the live demonstration of this. <clears throat> I want to start with showing uh, the team permissions. So currently I'm in the design collaboration environment of an Autodesk construction cloud hosted project called ABC Sydney Hospital. I'm looking at the settings and under the teams, if I go to the structure team here, and if I look at team member permissions, I can see that there is a role called architect that has been given create permission. <clears throat> now I'm a big fan of role-based permissions. And the reason is because that way, anyone who's been assigned architect role when they're added to the project 
they would automatically get create permission to the structure folder. Now with this create permission added to the structure folder, when I go to Revit from the ABC Sydney Hospital, I'll open the architecture model. Now, once I've opened the architecture model, when I'm linking this model, so let me just move uh, this out of the way. Uh, how do I hide this? That's okay, I'll just move my rivet here. Okay, so if I go to the manage ribbon tab here, and if I go and say manage links, it'll take me to the manage links folder here. And when I go and say add, because it is a design collaboration enabled project with uh, Revit Cloud Works sharing enabled as well, it would straight away take me into this ABC Sydney hospital here under project files. Now, um, it does that automatically, just in case it doesn't do that automatically, you could go to external references here and you could go through your project, your account and so on. Now, when I go to project files here, I can see all these folders from all the teams in this project. Now, please, please, please note that the reason I can see all these folders is because I am the project admin. And as a project admin, I get permission to all these folders. If you are not a project admin, you will only have access to your team's work in progress folder and any other folder that you have been given access to. You will not have access to the other team folders. So in this case, because I've got create permission to the structure folder, I'll go to the structure folder here. And from here, I can live link structure model. Now, when I live link structure model, what this is doing is the work in progress model of the structure team is now being linked to my architecture model. Again, if I'm in a time crunch environment, this is the best way to do it. Because now when I go and say, okay, I've got the live link to the structure model. And that way, if any changes are made in the structure model, as soon as I go and sync with the cloud central, I will be able to see the changes. Now with this, one thing that I strongly recommend is, <clears throat> right now I've got this 3D view called architecture share, which is included in my publish set. Now, if my publish set only has one 3D view, which has got links in it as well, and if this project also has model coordination enabled, meaning automated clash detection, then the architecture model will also show structure link in it. So if you wanna just uh, clash check between architecture and mechanical, it would actually show architecture and structure against mechanical. We don't want that. So one thing that I strongly recommend is to create another 3D view. I'm gonna duplicate this view. And I'm gonna call this as a clash detection view. So that way I can include the clash detection view. So I'm gonna rename this as um, architecture clash check. Again, this could be included in your BIM execution plan, whether you're in design or construction phase in your design BIM execution or construction BIM execution plan, this actually could be included in that. So now when I go into publish settings, I'll also include the 3D view that I've got for clash check. And in this clash check 3D view, I would actually turn off the visibility of Revit link. So that way in the clash check view, there is no uh, structure model. Whereas in the architecture share view, there is structure model. So that way I can see both uh, architecture model with Revit link on docs as well as architecture model without Revit link. But most importantly, once I've done this, I will sync with the cloud central here. And then I'm going to publish this. So I'll go and say added structure live link. I'm a big fan of adding comments here because that way when I go back and look at the history of this particular model in my uh, uh, published settings, I can actually look at what all changes were made with every version change of this model. So now it's syncing with the Cloud Central model. It will save a local copy. And once it has done that, I can then close out of this model. And obviously right now, these changes are only visible to the Revit users. For these changes to be visible on docs as well, I'll just refresh this and I'll go and select the architecture model and I'll publish it. 
So I'll select this, I'll go publish. This is now when it's actually copying this architecture model onto the docs environment, which is Autodesk docs, where I'll be able to see these two 3D views as well. So this is what we call as live linking. Please, please, please be mindful that if you're working on large infrastructure projects with different stations and so on, uh, and you've got several or dozens of models linked, live linking is not the way to go. All right. So again, a little tip here, please make sure you create a 3D view with the links turned off. That way, that linked turned off view can be used for automated class check in the model coordination environment. All right. <clears throat> the second type of linking is what we call as shared linking. In this case, the teams actually go to the design collaboration environment and they go and share their package. So once a model is published on docs, they go and share their team's package. As soon as their team's package is shared, their models that were included in the packages would automatically be copied from their work in progress folder to the shared folder. Now, please note that I've got a little asterisk here under shared. That's because you could actually uh, change the name of the folder. You don't want shared folder. You could go and change it to shared design folder or whatever it is. So whatever is your shared folder is the folder in which the models will be copied automatically from the work in progress folder of the team directly into that particular folder. And the other teams will then go into the shared folder and link the models from that shared folder. Now, this would ensure that the active changes do not appear when you sync with Cloud Central. Again, if you look at some pros and cons of it, one of the biggest benefit is that the model that you are linking is actually released by a designated person. Now, what that designated person uh, does is, and in most cases, that designated person is actually the team lead. So they will share their package. That means somebody is going through some basic checks before the models are released for the additional teams. This will ensure that your model does not update until the next package is shared by the owners. This reduces the bandwidth, hard disk use, and also collaborative data loss, just in case somebody makes some changes to the live model. It also minimizes potential problems with incomplete or in-progress content, such as, for example, um, um, unbound rooms. Now, some of the disadvantage of this is you do not have the opportunity to review changes, meaning although you have linked the model that is released by the other team, you still do not have control to see what changes were made in that model. This could adversely affect your work. For example, the uh, structure team moved a column and you've laid down all your ducts by referencing that column. Suddenly it would go and modify those ducts as well because of that change or move. Let's take a look at live demonstration of this now. Going back into Revit, I'll go into um, project files here and I'll open the mechanical model. Now, as I'm opening the mechanical model, the first thing I'll do is going back into my uh, Chrome window. <clears throat> if I go into the folder structure here under design collaboration, let's say, um, the structure team has published their latest model. And if I go into these uh, team lines, I can see that the structure team has published their latest model here. Now, how do I know that this latest model is published? By looking at this filled square on my team lane. This filled square on the team lane actually tells me that on the 18th of November, the model or uh, the, the models by the structure team were published. Now for the US uh, um, audience, please note that our dates are the other way around. It's showing 18th of November. So uh, it's not 11, 18, it's 18, 11 for us. So once the latest uh, models have been published, by the way, uh, um, Sean, we're actually working in, uh, in different time zones and it feels like uh, I'm actually in the future from you. So you are still on 17th of November. And I'm here on 18th of November. That's true. We need to talk about stock prices. <laughs> yeah, that's and, right. And yeah. <laughs> futures, all those kind of predict, predicting the future stuff. Correct, exactly. So once the latest uh, model has been published by the structure team, 
the structured team lead would go and click on this icon here where they'll go and share the package. Uh, I'm a big fan of renaming this. I'm gonna call this as weekly share because that's what we've been doing. Weekly share. And in this weekly share, I'll go under my publish set and I'll go and select this publish set. This publish set includes two uh, sheets as you could see here and the 3D view. I'll go save. And then I'm gonna go and say share. Now, as soon as I hit share, the program says, uh, you sure you want to share this uh, package? I'll say, yep, let's share this package. So as soon as I do this, this is where the structure model is now copied from the structure work in progress folder directly into, let me just move this here, directly into the shared folder. So if I go into the docs environment, and if I go under the shared folder, the program automatically copies the structure model from the structure work in progress folder to the shared folder. And again, please note that the reason I can see all these folders here is because I'm the project admin. If I go into shared and if I go structure, I can see the structure model copied just now. And once this structure model is copied into the shared folder, this is now where I can go into Revit. I'm gonna go and say manage, manage links. And when I go and say add a Revit link, in this case, again, it takes me directly into my project. And under project files, I'll go into the shared folder this time. So when I go into the shared folder, I can see all the teams that are part of my project. And if I go into the structure folder here, I can see the structure model. So what this would do is it would then links this structure model from the shared folder, not from their work in progress folder. Again, the one of the biggest advantages is that the live changes from the structure model will not appear in my model here. So when I go and say, okay, I can see the structure model linked now. And um, most importantly, you will see that I already have a clash detection view created here. In this clash detection view, I could go and turn off the visibility of structure. So I'm gonna go here, I'll go to links, turn off the visibility of the structure. So that way, this view will be used for automated clash checks. That way, when I'm running mechanical versus structure, it's not doing structure against structure again. And once I'm done with this, I could go and sync with the Cloud Central and I can publish the latest model. So again, the key is I'll go and say added structure shared link. So um, it, this would ensure that there's no going back and forth with the, uh, with the cloud model on a regular basis and the live changes will not appear in my model. So this is what we call as shared linking. Now, again, one of the tips here for you is that um, only the views and sheets included in the published set are available for viewing in docs. So if I just quickly go back to Revit in this case, and if I look at collaborate published settings, only the views and sheets that you see here would be the views and sheets that be available under docs for viewing. So under docs, if I go to the mechanical folder, and if I open the mechanical model, only the views and sheets that were included in the published set will be part of this viewing set here. So if I go under sheets and views, these were the two 3D views and the sheets here. So that's a little tip for you guys. And that's shared linking. The next one is consumed linking, which is my favorite. But before I go into consumed linking, Sean, do we have any questions from the audience? No, we just we just had a suggestion on uh, permissions and it was uh, from Amadeo and it was Autodesk should implement permissions based on combination of organization and role. This would make management more pl flexible and reduce the number of roles needed. Also 100%. because roles cannot be created at project level. 
Oh yeah, hundred percent. So we can um, just I showed you earlier. I uh, assign role based permission. You could actually assign company based permission as well. So if you know the architectural company that's working on this project is Bait Smart, you could actually add that company Bait Smart. So whosoever is a part of that company will get the permission. So it could be role based, it could be organization based, whatever you want. Absolutely no problem. All right. So let's go back and look at the third type of linking, which is consumed linking. As I said, consumed linking is my favorite. Consumed linking is where once a package is shared by a particular team, I actually then go and look at that package and consume that package. Now, once I consume the package, the model of that particular team is copied from their shared folder into my team's work in progress folder, consumed folder. So that way, because the model is now copied inside my work in progress consumed folder, I have a lot more control over everything. And the biggest part of this is when I'm linking this from my work in progress consumed folder, I am in full control over when I'm consuming and what I'm consuming. And the best part of all this workflow is before I consume a package from a, uh, a different team or another team, I can actually compare the latest version with the previous version that I consumed. That way I can see what all changes that particular team made and I can decide whether I want to consume or not consume that package. Now, some of the biggest benefits are the release model is approved and, and accepted by my team lead. And because it is approved and accepted by my team lead, I have a lot more control over what I'm seeing. The consumed model does not update until my team lead consumes the next package by the other teams. It also allows us to review designs to find out what changes are made before consuming. That way I can control whether it's gonna impact my work adversely or not. Now, some of the disadvantage of this obviously is it's not suitable when you're in time crunch because what we are talking about here is somebody publishing their models, then somebody sharing their packages, and then someone from my team consuming the packages. Let's take a look at live demonstration of this. <clears throat> going back into the design collaboration environment, let's say in this case, I'm gonna change my team to mechanical team. Now, again, please note that the reason I'm able to change the teams here is because I am project admin. If I'm not project admin, then I won't be able to change anything here. Then only my team lists at the bottom where I can go and create packages and consume packages. So I'm looking at this here that the structured team shared a package. How do I know they have shared a package? Because I can see this circle on their team lane. Now I can also see that this package was not consumed by my team. How do I know that? because the circle here is not a filled circle. If it's a filled circle or a filled hybrid, that means that I have actually consumed the package. So what I'm going to do here is, I'm going to actually click on this package that the structure team has shared. And before I click consume, I can explore their model or I can compare their model. And this is my favorite feature here. I'm gonna go compare it'll say, all right, what do you want to compare? Now I can compare the package that was shared today with the package that I consumed last time, which was on the 9th of November. I actually did not consume the package on the 14th of November. So I'll go and say, compare this model with this package that I consumed on the 9th of November. And now I can click on show changes. As soon as I click on show changes, this is where now the program goes and compares the two versions of the models. And it will come up with a window showing me everything that has been modified, deleted, and added. How cool is this? Now, I could see that there was nothing deleted. There are 817 elements that were modified, and there were 18 elements that were added. Now, if I want to only focus on the elements that were added, I could go and click on modified so it disables them. I can see that there were all these different pile caps that were added. I could now click on any of these piles here 
and it shows me that this is how this looks like in this version three. And if I click on version one, it actually tells me that obviously it did not exist in version one because it is added here. Similarly, if I go and say I wanna focus on modified, I can see that there were all these different columns that were modified. <clears throat> there were all these different, uh, let me just hide these um, columns. <clears throat> there were structural foundation that were modified. There were framings that were modified. If I look at the foundations again, I can see all these different foundations that were modified. So it's telling me that this is how this looks like in version three. And if I click on version one here, it tells me that this is how it looked like in version one. How cool is this? This is one of my favorite features of anything design collaboration or cloud related, where I can compare different versions. I also have more details available here as to what changes were made and things like that. Similarly, if I go into all these different columns, I could go and click on any of these columns. I could say that this is version three and this is how it was in version one. I could see that it was originally W25 um, by 120, but that got changed to 145. So I've got all this information here. Now with this information, I can actually rest assured that because they did not actually move any of these columns or they did not delete any of these columns, it's not gonna adversely affect my work. So I can now happily go and consume this structure model. Now, as soon as I click consume, consume, what the program does is it now copies, uh, let me just move this here and go into docs. It now copies the structure model from the shared folder into my team's consumed folder. So if I go under structure, I could see that this has just now been copied into my, my team's consumed folder, which means if I go back into Revit, let me go into manage, manage links. The first thing is I'm going to remove this link, which was from the shared folder. And now when I go and say add, I could go into my team folder into consumed and link from there. So if I go into project files under mechanical consumed folder here, and I'm linking it from the consumed folder. So this way it would ensure that I've got full control over what I'm linking in my model. Tomorrow, if there's a new package linked, or a new package shared, before I consume it, just like I showed you, I'll be able to compare the versions. And if I'm not happy with the changes that the other team has made, I could actually go and add issues associated with those new packages and tell them that we can't really work with these for whatever reasons. I can now sync with the Cloud Central here. And this time I'm gonna go and say added structure link from the consumed folder, if I could spell it right. There we go. So this is what we call consumed linking. Now, again, a little tip for you. With the consumed models, you can actually use this really cool tool called project model, where you can look at your model federated with other models that you have consumed. So going back into the design collaboration environment, I'm currently um, as a mechanical team. And if I click on project model here, the project model tool actually shows my model federated with other team models that I've consumed. And the best part is I can control the visibility of any of these models. And I can even use what we call as the team color theming to display all these models. So if I want to use plumbing, because I've consumed plumbing as well, and mechanical using the team color theming, that's what I can see here. So for a lot of your project engineers or your project managers, if they want to have a look at the detailed model federated with other consumed models, they can come into this environment here and they can click on project model to look at these linked project models basically federated with the other team models that you have consumed. I can also at any point of time turn off the visibility of any of these models. How cool is this? This is a question that I get 
asked quite often, especially if you do not have a 3D view where you have linked the models. In that case, your project engineer or your project manager could come into this environment here and look at this project model where your model is now federated with the other models that you've consumed. So that's what we call as consumed linking. And let's now talk about non-work shared derivative models. <clears throat> now, as I mentioned, there will be some uh, teams in the projects that are not using Revit Cloud work sharing. In that case, they regularly provide your model or their model through services such as Dropbox, or they could simply be dumping their models into a folder that they've been given access to on Autodesk Docs. In that case, these models can be linked using desktop connector. Now, I wanna quickly talk about what is desktop connector. Desktop connector basically is an application that syncs Autodesk Docs data sitting on the cloud with your local folders for easy file management. What it does is it actually updates changes to the data source from Docs to your local folders, which means your uh, Autodesk software would see those changes. So basically all it's doing is it's creating an integration to exchange files between Docs and your local drive that your softwares will see. All right, um, talking about the impact of non-work shared linking, the non-work shared Revit models linked through desktop connectors are shown in Revit. However, their visibility is not supported on docs. So please, please, please be mindful of this, which means that if I open the same model on docs, I will not see a model linked through desktop connector. Now, this is a question that I guess get asked a lot um, from my customers saying, oh, we have linked the model, but when we open that link view in docs, we can't see the linked models. That's because you link using desktop connector, not using your proper linking methods. Let's take a look at live demonstration of this. For this, if I go and open, let's say, um, my plumbing model, I'll close out of mechanical, now, the important thing again here is that you need to have desktop connector installed on your machine. Uh, desktop connector is a free product that can be downloaded from, um, uh, from Autodesk website. If you just Google search download desktop connector, it would show you that. The uh, advantage of desktop connector is once you have added or installed desktop connector, if you go into the file browser here, you would see under this PC an item called Autodesk Docs. And what Autodesk Docs does is it shows you all the accounts that you have been added to as part of your project uh, permissions. And if you go to any of these accounts, you will see all the projects listed here. So if I go under this here, I can see all the folders. Again, I can see all the folders because I'm the project admin. So in this plumbing model here, um, I've got electrical team on this project that is not using um, design collaboration or Revit Cloud work sharing. All they are doing is they are taking their models and they are dumping them into the electrical folder. So if I go under electrical folder here, all they are doing is they are dumping the models here by simply dragging and dropping. So if these are non Revit cloud work shared models, if I go under Revit and if I go back in here and if I go into the electrical folder, I will not see the electrical model listed here because it's not a Revit Cloud work shared model. That's why what I need to do is uh, to link that model. When I go into manage links, let's drag this here. So manage, manage links here. And when I go and say add, in this case to add this electrical link, I will have to go into this look and drop down list here I'll have to then go and click on this PC. So once I click on this PC, I will see Autodesk Docs. And when I see Autodesk Docs, again, I'll go into the account. I'll go into the project, go into the team that has been dumping their models in Docs here, and then link from here. So this is really, really important. And that's what I've done in this case. I have linked this model using the desktop connector. Now. If I go and do a proper linking in this um, electrical model, let me go and link mechanical model using proper linking. So 
if I just go and use the shared linking in this for the mechanical model, you will notice that the saved path that is um, linked using desktop connector appears a little bit different from that that is linked using proper linking methods. Once it shows, I'll um, show you this here. So please, please, please be mindful that the models that are not Revit Cloudworks shared will have to be linked using desktop connector. So notice that the electrical model shows me the account name here as well, whereas the model that is linked as a proper linking method will not show me the account name. So that's the difference. Please be mindful of this. And although in this case, the electrical model is linked to the plumbing model here, and I can see it here. When I go into the docs environment, and if I go and open the plumbing model from the docs environment, I will not see the electrical model here. So please, please, please be mindful of this. I can only see the plumbing model, although I am in the right view, which is plumbing share, which was supposed to show me electrical. So the models that are linked through desktop connector are not supported in docs. The views inside Revit will show you the electrical link, but not in docs. So please, please, please be mindful of this. Uh, a little tip for you guys here. AC collection subscription now includes access to Autodesk Docs. So if you're working with a project uh, team that is not using uh, design collaboration, but are still providing you models through Dropbox, get them to actually uh, give them access to the Autodesk Docs folder, because as part of their AC collection, they can access Docs. They don't want, they don't have to continue using Dropbox. They can use docs, which means they can drag and drop the revised model whenever they want. Now, that's all I have here. But before I finish, I just want to give a little plug to um, the Autodesk Customer Success Hub. This is the web page here, customersuccess.autodesk.com. This Customer Success Hub has got several courses between 10 to 15 minutes to 20 minutes courses that you could actually go and have a look at to update your knowledge and to upskill yourself. There are a lot of um, cross country, uh, cross industry courses, not cross country, cross industry courses there. Uh, there are AC uh, courses, design and manufacturing courses. So if you want to upskill yourself within 15 minutes, please go and have a look at this website here, customersuccess.autodesk.com, where you could go and look at all these different courses. And that's all I have in this demonstration here. As I mentioned, I love doing live demonstrations and I'm glad the technology actually uh, helped me today. So we didn't have any dramas. With this, I wanna open for Q&A, Sean. I know Mark had a question. Yeah, um, hi Deepak, thanks for that. Hey Mark Abrams. So Sean, just so uh, you, you know, Mark actually is uh, based here in Australia. He's up the coast, living the dream. Uh, living next to the beach, goes uh, surfing every morning. Hey, you don't need to rub my face in it. <laughs> How are you, Mark? Um, I am good. I'm good. Um, I, I have a range of questions, I guess. Um, one you were showing before about having different 3D views set up for model coordination and not. Yep. Is there a way within the Revit project itself to determine or specify which of those views is going to be used in BIM 360 model coordination under the automatic flash detection process? So uh, the views that would be used for model coordination uh, is pretty much all 3D views that are part of your published set. So any 3D view included in your published set will automatically be um, used in model coordination. However, model coordination gives you actually settings that you can then control. So for example, obviously a linked view, you do not want to use for model coordination because it's gonna grind the clash detection process to a halt. So we can go into settings in model coordination and we can turn off those linked views. Yeah. So that's, that's what we do. Any 3D view that you do not want to include in model coordination can actually be excluded from your published set. Yep, okay. No, I just wondered whether there's a way of doing it from, from the Revit model itself, but that's all right. Um, 
another thing with linking and updating links and things like that, I've found that when I when I navigate through to the path of where the file file is, often I'll find that either the date that's being shown or if it's a new file is not actually there. And I have to go back one folder and then back in again for it to appear. Do you find that or do you know what's going on there? Uh, so is this desktop uh, connector linking or is it uh, linking through normal linking methods? Um, well, I guess that's possibly a question. And my next question as well is because I think I found that was happening out of default, I've ended up pretty much navigating back to my computer um, docs and going in there. Yeah, so if you're using it's... desktop connector linking, what you see in that folder sometimes is not refreshed to the uh, latest settings on, uh, on docs. So that's where you might just have to go into your uh, file explorer and just refresh the desktop connector. So that way it shows you the latest models. So in answer to your question, yes, if I'm using desktop connector linking, I have actually seen that because what I see inside Revit is not uh, set to the uh, refreshed view. So I have to go up one level and come back. And that's when it takes a second to show me the changes. All right, cool. But um, not, for, not for the actual design collaboration linking, the design collaboration linking works fine. All right, All right. okay, cool. Um, another question I've had, Lately, I've found um, a lot of the times when I'm trying to publish a new model to the cloud, it's getting stuck at 50% and just not going anywhere after 50%. Yes. Do you know what's causing that? Yes, there are actually several reasons that could cause that. Uh, one of the biggest problems that we have seen is with the linked models. So either the linked models have some views that have um, incorrect um, characters in the names or it is that the linked models are not upgraded to the latest version of Revit. So if your files are um, stopping at 50% or 75% or whatever it is, please have a look at the linked models to make sure if all the linked models are correct. There's actually um, an Autodesk support page that I could send you the link to where it talks about different um, uh, options that you could go through, different troubleshooting options that you could go through to find out what the problems could be. Yeah, that'd be good. It's happening a fair bit for me, so. Okay, sure. I'll send you that uh, link to that um, Autodesk uh, network or uh, knowledge network page, AKN page. Good. Um, another question. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Sean, we need to start. I'll, I'll, I'll give everyone else the questions. Yeah, we give do have some other questions too. <laughs> um, the file size on BIM three hundred and sixty is it like an accumulative? file size that's growing because it's recording all the different versions and keeping a record of the versions. I've just, yes. I've just taken a, um, a copy of a file down and the, the file on BIM 360 is showing at about 1.2 gig, um, saved, saved it locally, tried to push it back up. Um, but it's like the local file is about a lot smaller. Um, yeah. 1.2 met like, uh, sorry, hundred that, yeah. 120 so the, yeah. the size that you see in the web browser or uh, uh, in BIM 360 or ACC is the file that you're looking at, plus all the linked model sizes as well. So yeah. that's why when you download it as a local version, it only shows you the file size of that particular file. Whereas in the web browser in BIM 360 or ACC, it shows you the file plus all the links. Okay. All right, so when someone else is linking that file in, it's not trying to link a 1.2 gig file into it, no. That, that is correct, yes, yeah. Provided those links are um, done right, yes. All right, good. Um, I'll let someone else have a go now. <laughs> no worries, Mark. So Sean, do we have anyone else asking questions? We have Mark Decker asking any suggestions for a bridge workflow. Yes, yeah, so bridge workflow um, actually is really interesting. Obviously, uh, it doesn't really work with uh, the, um, the shared models, which is what I think the team's working on right now. So uh, the, the concept was it needs to go through a design review process. So maybe because it's a, it's a long, short um, answer, maybe we could get in touch. Uh, just look me up on LinkedIn and I could actually show you the whole process. One thing that I do want to add here is that if anyone here hasn't looked at Project Deckard, 
please, please, please look at Project Deckard. If you haven't heard of it, please get in touch with me. I'll get you in touch with the person who um, is, you know, Pro Project Deckard is his baby. So I can get you in touch with that person. Project Deckard works, uh, for me, it has worked a lot better than just Bridge. Maybe Bridge will include some of those features eventually, but yeah, um, please get in touch with me and I'm more than happy to um, link you with the right people. We got Martin asked me a question. Do you often see combinations of linking strat strategies on the same project? Some live, some shared, some consumed, or mostly just one approach on the same no, project? It, that's a fantastic question. The reason I showed you this is because your projects might actually have um, different linking strategies at different stages of projects. So I know initial stages where um, there are a lot of changes um, people are more uh, into shared linking or consumed linking, but after later on in the project, when you have deliverables required, that's when they change it to live linking and so on. But again, it depends on your project type. Live linking, as I mentioned earlier, will not work on large infrastructure projects. So projects that Mark Abraham that um, were, was asking questions earlier, the kind of projects that these guys work on, live linking is not a good method. So in answer to your question, uh, you're right. It is a combination of different linking strategies uh, in the project. But please be careful. Make sure uh, these strategies are defined correctly in your execution plan. Uh, and the customer success hub that I showed you earlier actually has a course that talks about file linking methods in your, um, in your collaboration strategy. So just look at that course there. Uh, you'll find more information there. Amadeo, and I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Amadeo is asking, any recommendations if someone must rename a model after this has been shared and consumed and recommendations if a model must be recreated, like recreate the central after yeah. it's been shared or consumed? Yeah, so uh, yeah, uh, okay. The important thing here is that when we rename a model, the GUID of the model does not change. So when you are uh, actually renaming the model and sharing and consuming again, what needs to happen is that the old model needs to be, because it would still sit in the shared and consumed folder, the old file name. So you might have to actually delete that because if you have two models with different names and same GUIDs sitting in the same folder, that's where we have seen a lot of projects having problems where when you try to link the model, it actually doesn't show up there. And that's because in the same folder, there are two different models with different names, but the same, G, uh, same GUID. So again, if you go to the Autodesk Knowledge Network uh, page and uh, you have a uh, search on this, you would find instructions given there as to what needs to be done. But just remember as a rule of thumb, if you have renamed the model, the GUID does not change. So if you have the old model as well as the new model sitting in the same folder, all the different names, there'll be same GUIDs, which means when you go to link them, they will not show in the link dialog box. This is something that I've uh, seen so much and I get asked so much all the time um, by my customers. All right, I've got to try and keep this on track. We got quite a few here, comments and everything. Um, Kira at, or says, I often, the sounds like I often have the issue that I only see get latest published version in BIM 360 only after I go out and back into that folder. These models are linked through BIM 360. Um, I, I, I did not I, understand the question. So when they are looking at the model from the web browser. I think I think he's um, only getting the latest co commenting back on my earlier earlier uh, question. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think he's finding the same thing where even though they are linked through BIM 360, they're not showing up until he goes back one folder yeah. and then in again. Yeah, so that's when, right. When you... Sorry, yeah, yeah what I was saying is that yeah, in the BIM 360 environment, I'm often not seeing the published version correctly. And even though it has been published and is up on 360, that even after the wheel spins round and round, it, it still doesn't show the right version until I go back out of the folder and back in. Um, yeah, if that is also happening on the web browser, I think it is more to do with the refresh thing on your machine because I haven't seen that in the web browser. I okay. have seen that from the Revit side or from the file explorer side when I'm looking at 
um, desktop connector. So if I just quickly go back to my machine. So in here, when I'm looking at uh, this PC going through Autodesk docs here, uh, and if I go into this project here, if I go to a particular file, now this is where I do see a problem because I'm looking at desktop connector that this file actually doesn't show up here. So I have to go back, wait for a second, come back in here, and that's when I see it. Um, in some cases, I can also right click and I can go and say free up space. So it actually removes the local cache version and then I can actually uh, sync it again. Or you could just go and say sync for it to download. So from the um, file explorer side and from Revit side, I have seen this. And that is just uh, because it takes a bit of time for it to actually download everything from cloud onto the local uh, synced drive. But if it is also happening in the web browser here, um, in that case, I would recommend you uh, maybe deleting your cache and then coming um, back here. Uh, I strongly recommend using Chrome for all these activities. So if you're using Chrome and still seeing this problem, I think it is more of a refresh issue on your machine uh, than anything else. And, and Mark, while we got you, I would just say, if you have some uh, ideas or you want to know what's coming in the future, we can't really say what's coming in the future. Go back <laughs> to the lawyers. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Um, another question I've got is um, sort of default setup for a project. I think GHD at the moment have got one sort of default setup, but is there a way of actually having one that's set to high trust and one that's set to a low trust environment. Yeah, so, so when you set up permissions and things are already sort of set between those. Yep. So when you set up your uh, project templates, if your um, design collaboration teams have got role based permissions, they can actually carry over into your new project that you start using the template. So high trust, low trust, it all carries over based on role based permissions. However, if it is a user-based permission, then that is not included in the templates. Role-based permissions are. Okay. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the last question here. Um, Kira asked, uh, what other types of models or docs to people uh, do they find it, uh, uh, useful to upload to their project and BIM 360 sites as opposed to local drive? Um, so I take it the question is whether they should be dragging and dropping the models into the web browser compared to File Explorer. So I find it web browser. Uh, I think he's actually asking what type of content, like you know, spreadsheets, design files, documents, oh, yes. PDFs. Yeah. So um, both ACC and BIM 360 have got viewers for over 60 different file formats. The best part with the Microsoft files, which means your Excel and Word files is, you can host them on ACC or BIM 360. And if you've got subscription to Office 365, you can actually edit your Word documents or Excel spreadsheets on BIM 360 or ACC without the need of downloading them, making changes and uploading them again. So Office 365 subscription has got um, live connectivity with BIM 360 as well as ACC. So in answer to your question, you could upload any file format. Um, you've got viewers for about 60 different file formats. And with Microsoft Office, you also have ability to live change it on BIM 360 or ACC. Excellent. All right. Let's uh, and thank you for all the great questions and comments, everybody. Um, let's let's go to the next slide, please, Deepak. I'm going to share some links. So don't leave yet. I got just a couple of slides to give you. Uh, and you're going to get a quick little survey at the end of this when you exit. It really helps us know what you'd like to, to see in the future and different different types of topics um, and what you what you found valuable. Um, as I mentioned, you could, you could be a, a host for community conversations. I gave you a bunch of links throughout the community and uh, Deepak is one of the authors, in, and he has been in the, uh, the Voices, which is a whole bunch of customers helping out other people in the community. So it's a great way, and you can be an author as well. So lots of Revit and Cloud and Civil 3D and all kinds of good stuff in there. So um, fellow community members like yourself. So thank you very much. Thank you, Deepak.
there's there's what I was hitting at, you know, community groups, voices blog, the journal, the student group pub. I don't think we have any students in here, but if we did, or if somebody's watching it, got our Twitter handle, we got all kinds of good stuff. So thank you, everybody. And have a nice rest of your day. As Thanks I'm again, as I'm going you. into the day that Deepak and Mark are already having. So <laughs> Thanks, Sean, for giving me the opportunity. And thanks, everyone, uh, for joining this uh, session. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you found it useful. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Thanks, guys. See ya.